So let's make a census of what we've seen so far. We looked at the implementation of a pre-order DFT and a post-order DFT as recursive functions. And uh, here I gave you an example of a pre-order DFT that is non-recursive. Uh, and now what we're, we're going to be doing is looking at the implementation of a BFT. And in this case, it's going to be non-recursive. We don't have a recursive implementation of a BFT. So the way we're going to do it, actually, if you know this algorithm, if you don't know the non-recursive algorithm of a pre-order DFT, then all you have to do to get the uh, BFT algorithm is to replace the stack S by a Q. And this, this, this substitution will have the effect that you will be visiting the nodes level by level instead of going deeper and deeper. Um, so let's still examine that algorithm and how it works. So what we're doing essentially is the first thing we do is we're going to enqueue the root node onto our stack, onto our uh, into our queue. Then uh, we still have that same condition. While the queue is not empty, what we're going to do is we're going to take dq whatever is there, and it happens to be the root in the first instance, and we're going to visit that root, and then for each child of that current node, which happens to be the root, we're going to enqueue all of its children into the queue. So if this was the queue, we first had the root, we took it out, and now we have its children. Okay, so in this case it's going to be 2, 5, 6. Um, and then what we're going to do, we're going to come back to that condition, we're going to ask ourselves, is Q empty? No, it's not. We have three uh, nodes waiting. So what we're going to do is we're going to DQ. Now, the distinction that's going to happen here, so the difference that's going to happen here between the stack and the Q, is that in the case of the stack, you actually take out uh, um, the latest element that was added, so 6. Whereas in the Q, since 2 was first added, we're going to actually deal with 2. So we're going to take 2, we're going to visit 2. So in this case, if you looked at it, we're going to be visiting this. And and then we're going to do perform the same thing. We're going to enqueue all of its children. So all the children of 2 will be added here. And next time we're going to come back, we're not going to be dealing with the children of 2, but we're rather going to deal with 5. So we're still dealing with the same level, 2, 5, 6, if you remember. So we're going to be finishing off with this level before we move on to the, to the children that we kept on adding. <clears throat> so in fact, what we're doing here is we're, we're building the next level. Every time we pass here and we add the children of a particular node, we're actually building the next level. So when we deal with 2, we added the, uh, its children to the queue, and then we're going to deal with 5, and then we're going to add its children to the queue, and then we're going to deal with 6, and we're going to do the same thing. So in the end, when we get to this point, and we've dealt with 2 and 5 and 6, we're going to be dealing with their children in this order. So in level order. And their children might have children of their own. So in the end what we're doing is we're um, visiting the levels one by one. So this is a BFT. This is an implementation. Now finally, now that we've seen implementations of DFT and BFT, let's just look at what exactly do we mean by for each child. So when we talk about for each child here, or even in um, previous implementations like for each child, what exactly does that mean in code? Well. If we remember from a previous video how we implemented a tree, we said that the children will be implemented uh, using either a linked list, array list, or in this case what I illustrated here is the first child next sibling implementation. <clears throat> so if you remember from an earlier video about trees, we talked about this implementation. So there would be a pointer, every node would have a pointer to the first child and to the next siblings until we reach null. So this tree would be represented in fact uh, in this manner. And code. So, when we talk about for each child, we're performing an operation. What we're basically saying is that we're storing the first child of that particular node that we're talking about, whose children we're trying to iterate through, and then we take that and we say, while current is not null, we're going to be performing something, either in queuing, pushing, or visiting, or whatnot, and then we're going to move on to the next sibling and come back to that condition. So this basically replaces our um, <clears throat> for each child of current. So for simplification purposes, we use this, but in reality, when you're going to actually be coding it, if you had such an implementations for your tree, you would use something like that.